By your sweet, sweet, sweetest Princess Silk. Ciao, ciao, I am your sweet, super soft, and silky smooth Princess Silk. Sharing my wisdom kindly with you and generously. Now that I looked into the story with Stan, no, it was not Stan Getz. He didn't got anything. Because this is what it is. I would not, I wish to establish, call him my friend. Like, for example, in Mexico, everything is different. This music teacher, the dancer, la bailarina, she said she danced when she was young with la orquesta Enrique Jorín. Wait, did she say she danced with Pérez Prado? Oh, I think she said she danced with Pérez Prado, so it's mambo. No cha cha cha. Yeah, well, that's it. So, <laughs> was she over it? Yeah, but she, she, yeah, she was, but it looks different. She had long hair. Music teacher. I don't know, she's kind of young at heart. So the overweightness is not really that important. It's noticeable in quilting ladies who have nothing inside. Who roll up their little hairs <laughs> in plastic rolls. It's not really noticeable that much in someone who has got lots of inside. And she being the music teacher and such, she was also into pedagogy, so that was really nice. Uh, somehow she approached me and started talking to me. As she was explaining what the kids were doing, she was enthusiastic about it and I listened. And because of that, she invited me to go dancing. So we went. She, I don't know, I don't know who, I mean, I brought who was dancing with me and she brought maybe who was dancing with her or maybe more. I don't remember if there were more people than just four. I, don't, I cannot remember. But now I would, I would consider her my friend. I'd say she's a friend. Because that is the vibration which we generated. She being the teacher and I'm being, you know, someone who had to listen or not listen to her. But Stan, he wasn't my friend. And his girlfriend, she wasn't my friend. Actually, nobody in that course or the other course of Psyche was my friend. The German lady? No, nah, she would never become a friend. Because they have nothing, they have no vibration of friendliness. As a friend you must engage. I know why. Gerardo Kleinberg, he wasn't my friend, but he could have become one. That's interesting, right? Okay, Gerardo Kleinberg is the director of opera loathed and feared by everybody because he decides who sings and he is highly paternalistic in which he invites to sing his friends he is tiny he is ugly he's skinny he has a german last name he probably never spoke german and admires german people as most mexican do i was sent to him by his boss who was the director of bayes artist no he listened we talked But I cannot understand Arslickers. I think he was a big Arslicker. But he had more vibration. I didn't like him at all. Yuck. I wasn't really biased. I heard everything about him before I went to see him. I was a real Arsenal. I could only, I mean, I couldn't really confirm it in action, but as I looked into that, of course he treats me nicely. I am a diva, I look like one, and I'm German too, if I mean that means something to him, I guess. I'm formal, I'm elegant, I'm respectful. Yeah, I also was recommended, but... You see, 
that is the kind of person who is Gerardo Kleinburg. Kleinburg means small tower. Klein, small Borg tower. For fortress, right? Something like that. Fortress. So that is the type of, type of person who needs everybody to look up to him, to suck up to him. And he needs to kick him down because he is that arslicker. His boss wasn't done. His boss was integral. His boss was tall like a statue as a person. Gerardo would never achieve to become director of Vegas Artists, ever. I don't know what brought him to opera and how could he even be there. But in that hierarchical system, hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchical system, I step into his large office and now I become the boss. <laughs> that's what I mean by I'm German. Now get no more kisses. Well, that's like his preconceived notion. But even though if he would have doubted it as like a notion, the moment he sees me, yeah, as a notion per se, then the moment he sees me, he has to bow because I represent everything he wants to achieve and what he would never do. But he looks because Mexican, maybe DNA, was he blonde? Not, no, but he wasn't really dark, dark skinned either. I don't know, there's pictures online, you can look them up. Oh, he was whiter in his factions than his boss. <laughs> God. But in the vibration, because of partial DNA, he was closer. Because Mexicans observe. Yeah, the knuckles, they don't, they, don't, they don't observe. They're like idiots. Yeah, they see tits and ass. It doesn't matter where it comes from. But Mexicans, my Mexicans, the real Mexicans, they observe. Yeah, so did his boss. I mean, he didn't have to send me to Kleinburg. It was Parente, Robert Parente. He said, oh, today we're going to eat blah, blah. Okay. It seemed like they were like friends of Mark, his brother. So Robert and I, we went, this couple was there. I said six people. Then the director of Vegas Artists was there. I don't know if Marion was there, Mark's wife. And I was put next to, can I name him now? The director of Vegas Artists. He was leading on one side of the table. I was sitting next to him. We were talking. And next he sends me to go have a talk with, you know, the, the director of opera, which was working under him. He could have said, he could have not done it. I don't if obligated or not. My, the issue is this. Why would he not present me? Look at me. If I would be an asshole, he might have had his doubts or felt obligated maybe, or, or squished into a corner. But I could be the potential new greatest star ever in Mexico or in the world. Why would you deny me the access? He was cool because it doesn't mean anything. He didn't say Gerardo hire her. He said, just go look. I wasn't ready to sing yet. I knew it. Uh, I, I didn't want to ask to have a, a job in a position for singing at the time. I know my limits and my boundaries. I wasn't quite there yet. Not there yet. So observing. The director of Vegas Artists observed. And the notion was, yeah, she cool. And maybe he had more, which I don't see. But that's the minimum. He could have become my friend too. Well, I cannot put a comparison to the Americans, the gringos. The one, well, Sergio Zacaria said, Zilke, they don't get it. Because I wasn't talking with them, but I don't think they could ever be my friends. Friends. Okay, here's an interesting fact. That's a long story. As I exited the opera workshop from Saltillo, on a very short notice, I made a choice on the highway. It says San Miguel de Allende to the right, next exit. So almost like with the tires <laughs> making that noise, I choose to take the exit 
and stop at San Miguel de Allende. I searched for a hostel to overnight. That was like uh, at the spur of the moment. So here I was in the hostel with two children and the au pair from Germany, from Munich. Yeah, funny, not so funny. Very cheap hostel. Very cool, but empty. So there were lots of bunk beds so we shared, but there were still bunk beds left. And as I was there now, there was an American woman sitting on the table. And of course she talked with me. And short after, I don't know how it went, also very fast. It happened that she was the only journalist, she said, who ever commented on Leonor brothers, the painter's work, Ray Smith. So kind of family, because I don't know, she made it a big fuss, like that was like an exclusive that she got an interview with Ray Smith. That was like the greatest thing ever. That's what she said, American woman. Maybe she was in her thirties, but she looked so overweight and so old in a way, maternal. Oh, she offered, she said, I take care of the kids. I, I look at them. I mean, in the evening, the kids sleep, right? Because the, uh, the, I don't know, I don't think he was an owner of an hostel, but the one who worked there, the guy, he was young and cool. He said, oh, we got, um, oh no, it was the next day. That was the following day. Okay, wait, let me retract. I don't know when I met her, but we arrived next day. We wanted to leave. And he said, stay. Because we got a salsa dancing tonight. I said, I can't really afford it. I said, yeah, what the, what the heck? I don't think he charged us for the second night. Just stay. And there I met the lady. And then she said, or maybe I had met her the night before. And she said, I take care of the children. Just go dancing. So uh, we went. The guy who was directing or, you know, administering the hostel and funny, you know, the babysitter who was like 18. And I... We went to that spot in San Miguel de Allende and dance, man. <laughs> dance like a goddess. I dance with San Miguel de Allende is different. But let me, before I go there, this American woman, in a way, being friendly and kind, she could never have been my friend because this kind of vibration lacking. Whereas the guy from the hostel, he could have become my friend immediately. I think he became, in a way. And the salsa dancing? San Miguel de Allende is more of these alternative places in Mexico. So you don't expect the rules to be applying like usual in Mexico. They're just not applicable. That means I can go dancing without a guy hitting on me. That matter. So I danced the entire night with very many different people. Just like that, just for dancing. Which was, of course, all the way more interesting. Because as a woman, I have to adjust to the man. So I had to adjust to all these different people. Maybe five, six, I don't know. I had to adjust each time to the way they dance. And that is a super achievement. Okay. <gasps> See you in the next video. <gasps> Bye. Can I? Bring you to the six where I really stay. Baby. Show you why I am the way I am. Can I? Tell you what I think my biggest flaw is. Baby. I try to be consistent, but I can't. Can I? Have an honest moment with you right now. Baby. Tell me who the fuck you wanna be. Can I? Get an honest answer from you right now. Baby. Cause all we ever talk about is me Can I? Before I turn the lights on Before I turn the lights out Tell me who the fuck you wanna be Can I? Call a steady text you on the hotline Sometimes a nigga wanna hear your voice Can I? See you right now, I know the sun is up Baby Sorry I don't really have a choice Can I? Never make you feel like I'm down for you Baby do so much more than that for me Can I? Finally take the time and open up to you Baby Cause that's the side you never get to see Can I?